live NFL trivia every Tuesday night on Twitch at 9 p.m. Eastern. Come show off your football knowledge and have a chance to win cash prizes. Check the link in the description to find out more. And now, on with our feature presentation. When a team makes it to the Super Bowl, it seems as though the whole city rallies behind them. You get the parades when they win, and you'll even get some recognition when they lose. You get the giant send-offs. You'll have mayors making friendly bets with the mayor of a team from another city. Sometimes, like with what happened with New Orleans after the Saints made it to Super Bowl 44, you'll even get a treat for the kids and have the day off after the Super Bowl or the conference championship. It seems like when a team makes it to the Super Bowl, especially when it's for the first time, there is nothing that a city won't do to rally behind it. But everything has its limits. And during the 1977 season, the state of Colorado went one step too far when acknowledging the success of the Denver Broncos. Bronco mania was a crazy thing back then. But even though the Orange Crush took over the Rocky Mountains, there was a point where the citizens said that enough was enough and put a stop to all of this. When the city tried to send the Broncos off to Super Bowl XII in style with the creation of a statewide holiday, it failed in spectacular fashion. And this is the story behind that. Before talking about what happened, I feel like it's important to have some context as to how Denver's season was going. When the Denver Broncos joined the AFL in 1960, they were immediately bad, finishing last in the division with a 4-9-1 record. Throughout their entire 10-year existence in the AFL, the team never even so much as had a winning record, let alone make the postseason. It wasn't until 1973 when the Broncos had a winning record for the first time, going 7-5-2. But in 1977, everything changed. People expected Denver to be in the running that year, as they were coming off of a 9-5 season. But I don't think anyone expected them to do what they wound up doing, which was take control of the AFC by going 12-2 and winning the division. Denver had one of the best defenses in football, allowing just 10.6 points per game, which ranked third in the league. Led by first-year head coach Red Miller, they were nothing short of dominant. For the first time in franchise history, the Broncos had made the postseason after nearly two decades of waiting. And after beating the Pittsburgh Steelers in the divisional round by a final score of 34-21, it was time to square off against the Oakland Raiders in a New Year's Day battle for the AFC Championship. If the Raiders won, then it'd be their second straight year representing the AFC in the big game. If the Broncos won, well, this city was about to explode. In what turned out to be a highly controversial game, which you can learn more about by clicking the card in the upper right corner, the Broncos prevailed. They defeated the Raiders 20-17 and advanced to Super Bowl XII. At this point, the city of Denver wanted to celebrate. Broncos fans wanted to celebrate. Broncomania had taken over the city. But as the politicians were about to find out, maybe it went a bit too far. As is tradition, there is a two-week break between conference championship weekend and the Super Bowl. Most of the time when this break exists, a team will spend the first week in their home city and then go to the city of the Super Bowl during that weekend so that they spend the entire second week in the host city. You can learn more about an incident with that going horribly wrong by clicking the card in the upper right corner. With the Broncos set to leave town that weekend, the city wanted to throw a sending off parade that Friday. It seemed like a great idea, since the city loved its team, since this was a unique occasion, and since Bronco fans probably would have done something anyways to mark the occasion if the city didn't throw a parade. I cannot stress this enough. Bronco mania was insane. Just to give you an idea of some of the things that happened during that 1977 season, to show just how much the city and its residents loved the team. A resident missed a game during that 77 season because the local bus company didn't provide a bus on schedule, so she sued the bus company, and she won. After Bronco fans protested in front of the mayor's house, they were able to get a footbridge built to Mile High Stadium. One prison in the area shuffled their entire Sunday schedule around so that the inmates could watch the Super Bowl. And then, here's perhaps the craziest story of them all. Some fans were watching one of the Broncos games in a bar. Three people walked into the bar and started playing music on the jukebox. The Bronco fan got up and pulled the plug out of the jukebox, and then eventually pulled a gun on one of the people who played music on the jukebox during the game, resulting in one of these jukebox players dying. No, I am not making that up. Basically, Bronco mania was everywhere in Denver. And to mark the occasion, not only did Denver want to throw a parade, but the state of Colorado decided to mark the day of the parade with a statewide holiday. All city and state employees would be off that day. The same way that we get Martin Luther King Jr. Day or Labor Day, 
everyone in Colorado on January 6, 1978 would have gotten off for Broncos Day. That, as officials quickly found out, would be a mistake. Governor Richard Lamb announced the holiday, thinking that things were going to be great. But within two hours, Lamb received 300 telephone calls, with almost all of them being wholeheartedly against the idea of a statewide holiday. Why were people against it? Well, it would have cost the state an additional $2.4 million in terms of paying salaries to people who took the day off to go to the parade or to pay employees overtime for working on that day. And literally two hours after announcing the holiday, Lamb reversed course. You could have taken a nap and by the time you woke up, not even realized that your state created and canceled the holiday. As Lamb said, I've been hearing from my board of directors, the public, all morning. Boy, did we make a mistake. Everything was able to work out with a compromise. While there wouldn't be a statewide holiday, which could have been disastrous since Christmas and New Year's Day were within a two-week stretch already, the legislator passed a resolution honoring the team. And the send-all parade in downtown Denver was still in place, which drew anywhere from 60,000 to 100,000 people. Even though it wasn't a national holiday, many people took off of work to send their Broncos off to New Orleans with a bang. Unfortunately, it was all downhill from there. Super Bowl XII was an absolute disaster for Denver, as they lost 27-10 in a game where starting quarterback Craig Morton had just about the worst performance of all time, throwing four completions alongside four interceptions and posting a passer rating of 0.0. .0. Oddly enough, that was the first Super Bowl ever held in prime time. You can learn more about why that was by clicking the card in the upper right corner. The 1977 season was still a successful one for the Broncos, considering the fact that Denver had literally never made the postseason before, to make it all the way to the Super Bowl is a heck of an accomplishment. Just a word of advice to any city politicians who may want to celebrate their team going to the Super Bowl. It might not be the best idea to devote an entire statewide holiday to it, because as much as Broncos fans love their team, even they knew that a statewide holiday honoring their love to the team was one step too far. Be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, subscribe down below if you haven't already as it helps the channel out a lot. And be sure to check out Twitch every Tuesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern for your chance to play NFL trivia and win cash prizes. Link in the description below. If you want to see videos like this condensed down to 60 seconds, then follow me on TikTok at Jarrogator9 and subscribe to 60 Second NFL History on YouTube. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping out the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. So you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.